What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, not a whole lot of rebuilding. I haven't been doing much of anything for the past week. So I wanted to kind of make a video because I don't know how this is going to play out yet when it comes to your health. Um, it's kind of all up in the air. It's out of my hands, so to speak. Um, so I made a bunch of videos for you guys because I was going on vacation. I was going to go to Indiana. I was going to hang out at my uncle's house for about a week. So I made enough videos to get me through about eight, maybe 10 days to give me time to pack up and leave, get there, spend a week and come back and kind of get back into the, the groove of things. Well, as it turns out, and if I seem short of breath, I apologize. There's not much I can do about it. My oxygen is at like 94% right now. I think, I think that's what it is. Um, so a little short of breath and I've been out here trying to work today, which was a really bad idea. Um, so I came out here and I spent all night working on the Monte Carlo SS by myself. Um, I got most of it buttoned up. I got another video for you guys. I got a first drive coming out for you guys, like great experience. And then I got home really late, maybe midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And somewhere around two or 3 a.m. I started having these unbelievable pains and I've experienced them before so I, I, I knew I had a pretty good idea I should say of what it was I never went to the doctor for about three weeks I've been having a lot of pain in my right side uh, kind of high up surprisingly and uh, after doing some research about these these are like debilitating pains these are almost crippling type of pain um, and it would eventually kind of fade out and then I'd be fine again I tried changing my diet um, seemed to help for a while and then it'd come back again so this last time it was it was the worst it's ever been uh, it felt like maybe i was dying I, I was having a hard time breathing i felt like something was swollen like massively swollen inside of my like i don't even know where exactly like uh next to where maybe your stomach would be or or your liver or something you know kind of up here and i told my fiance i said i gotta go to the hospital and anybody that knows me, I don't go to the doctor. In fact, I haven't seen a doctor in, other than for my shoulder, I haven't seen like a doctor for five or so years. I, I don't go to the doctor. I don't get regular blood work done. I just, I avoid doctors at all costs. It's just something kind of weird with me. So if I say I got to go to the hospital, I got to go to the hospital. So uh, we packed up. We flew down to the hospital in Midwest City, um, went straight into the emergency room, and uh, it was a Sunday. So as of the making of this video, this is Saturday the 23rd. Uh, this was last Sunday that I went to the emergency room. Thankfully, they weren't busy. They got me right in, and the first thing they did is they put me on morphine. They said, uh, let's get your pain under control first. I've never had morphine before. Uh, this was my first experience, and it was it was something. It felt like a tidal wave hit me, and then just washed the pain away. That's all. That's the only way I can explain it. It washed everything away, not just the pain, everything, like everything. It was like a tidal wave when they opened that IV up, man, and it hit me. It was just like I got socked in the face by something hard, and then everything just kind of melted away. Honestly, it was kind of a scary experience at first but by the second time they hit me with morphine I'd kind of adjusted to it and it wasn't so it wasn't so dramatic um they ended up putting me in for an MRI they did uh EKG they did you know you know the routine they took vials of blood like they just went through and started doing the whole battery of testing and they came back pretty quickly and they, they told me what I was afraid it was. That's exactly what it was, is having what they call a gallbladder attack. Uh, my gallbladder had been infected. I was not aware of that because I didn't go to the doctor, but it was extremely swollen. I had several gallstones uh, that were blocking things up, and, and the infection had swollen it, to, and that's why I was feeling so much pressure and pain and heat. It was really bad, so they told me that... Uh, they said, you got to go in and we got to get this removed. Now, something about me that I, I don't generally come out and talk about or tell people, I'm kind of embarrassed about it. I've never had a surgery in my life. Not ever until now. Um, since I was a child, probably three or four years old, I had a problem with my tonsils. My mom took me 
to the doctor and they said, you got to get your tonsils out. I didn't even know what that meant at that age. They told me I could have all the ice cream that I wanted. I screamed and yelled and begged my mom to the point she did not get my tonsils taken out. I was terrified of surgery. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that my fear isn't so much of surgery, it's of dying. My fear is that I'm gonna be put under and once I am put under, I'm no longer in control. And when I went in there, they said, you're gonna to have to have surgery. My first question was, do they have to put me to sleep? Obvious answer, right? But I had to ask and they're like, yes, you've gotta to go to sleep for this one. Um, they didn't do the surgery on Sunday, which was St. Patrick's Day. Um, they got my pain managed. They transferred me by an ambulance to another hospital that was more capable of handling the procedure. And they told me that, you know, probably Monday is when I would be having my operation. So I get to the new hospital. My whole family comes around, which was really nice. Uh, it was nice to have everybody in one place around me. But at the same time, it felt like, I don't know, having all your family in the same place at the same time kind of makes you feel like is something going to happen to me. You know, uh, it was very, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I'm so thankful for all of them. But at the same time, I was scared to death, man. I probably shouldn't have said it that way, but literally, absolutely terrified of what was about to happen to me. They had me doped up. Uh, the medication changed. It was morphine. And then I don't remember what. They, they kept putting me on different medications. But Monday comes around. It's time for the procedure. And, uh, you know, it's time to go. They take my bed and they roll me into an elevator. They take me down to a little room where you talk with the anesthesiologists and and then they come get you and they move you to the real room. And uh, I remember going into that room. I just, I know a gallbladder surgery isn't the end of the world. There's much crazier, worse surgeries out there. Bypass surgeries, obviously, you know, removing a kidney or something. I get it. I'm not trying to say that my surgery was like the biggest thing, it, 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 obviously it's not, but to me it was, you know what I mean? To me, it was absolutely terrifying because this was me having to face my biggest fear, which was being put under and having my own life taken out of my body's control. Someone else literally held my life in their hands during the time that I was put under. And I got rolled into that room and I saw this guy with a table full of tools that looked like medieval torture devices. And I mean, my blood pressure must have just, I'm getting right now just thinking about it. I saw that table and I was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. And I kept having to tell myself, you know, hey, you got to, man. You got to because an infected gallbladder can kill you. Um, next thing I really remember is they moved me from one bed to another. They, uh, they already had an IV. I had like a port so they could just keep putting different stuff in me. Um, they loaded me with antibiotics. I mean, just loaded me up with antibiotics. It was absolutely insane how much they were pumping into me uh, before the surgery. Um, they were giving me a shot every eight hours in my stomach. And I ain't gonna lie, it left bruises and it hurt pretty bad. I got dots all over my stomach. It looks like somebody peppered me with a BB gun or something in my stomach. It was for... Uh, to stop blood clots. Um, I remember the last thing I saw before the lights went out, so to speak, was the clock, the clock on the wall. You see those like in all the movies, TV shows, and operating rooms, right? Like that clock with that second hand just, you know? I, and I remember seeing that and I remember thinking these could be like the last seconds of my life if something goes wrong and I ain't gonna sit here and cry or nothing but like seriously this this was facing my biggest fear in life which is death and I had no choice but to face it head on man and it was absolutely terrifying so I'm laying there and I'm hearing everybody talking and they say you know they got this mask they say we're gonna put this over your face it's gonna smell like a uh a shower curtain. It's going to smell like a brand new shower curtain. Well, I love the smell of new shower curtains. So I was like, awesome. They told me there's nothing in the mask but oxygen. You need to breathe deeply. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if they lied or not. All I know is that I went from being absolutely terrified 
two lights out. They didn't have me count backwards. I didn't count down. They didn't tell me anything was going to happen. It just... If that's what dying is like, like a natural death, I guess you could say, it's not that bad. Uh, now, like, you know, I have no idea if that's what it's like or not, but it wasn't even like going to sleep exactly. Like, it was literally, I was awake, conscious, thinking, blood pressure pounding, scared to death. And then it was, I was instant. I, I don't remember feeling anything other than suddenly everything went black. I was out. And the next thing I remember, well, the next thing I remember was a just ton of pain. Uh, it was a, a lot of pain when I woke up. So they ended up putting me on, uh, on fentanyl. And they had to give me some extra fentanyl after the surgery to kind of get me through. Um, I don't remember very much about waking up. Other than I had been in this room and then I woke up and suddenly I was back in my room and I had all my people around me again and 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 I made a couple jokes that's me even in a lot of pain and terrified not knowing what's going on I was making jokes and um, I don't really remember much uh, other than I could I remember seeing people around me there was conversation happening I remember trying to inject myself into it a little bit but I I I, I don't know. Um, they ran into a complication with my surgery, and this is something I was not aware of um, until later. Obviously, I was I was knocked out, but uh, my whole life apparently I have had an umbilical hernia, uh, an umbilical hernia. I had no idea. My entire life since I was born, I've had you know a belly button, right? You've got an innie and an outie. The innies, you know, they're the ones that you could poke a finger in, and it's like, ugh, yeah, no offense, but and the outies, well, they're just kind of slightly poked out, protruding just a little bit. And personally, I've always liked my belly button being an Audi. Uh, turns out it's an Audi because my intestines were poking through my uh, abdominal muscle or something, and my intestines were actually pushing through my belly button. My whole life. Didn't have a clue. Never had a clue. So they ran into a complication. The surgeon, apparently when he cut me open, um, they may, I've got several different holes in incision places, including a big one in my belly button. I no longer have an Audi. I now have one of those belly buttons you could stick a finger in. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, I'm sorry, but it's, it's weird. If, you, if, you, if you've spent 44 years with a certain type of belly button, and then suddenly someone snaps their finger, you wake up and it's different. You're like, this ain't my body. I'm kidding, but it, it is a little... It is a little weird. Laughing really hurts, by the way. Um, so I, I gotta, I gotta be careful here. Um, but anyway, the surgeon goes in, and they inflate your stomach with carbon dioxide. Yeah, think of soda pop. I can't even tell you the kind of pain when I woke up, bloated, full of carbon dioxide. It takes like a day, day and a half to get all that stuff out. It ends up coming out through your shoulders. You think online, Google it, and it's painful it is really painful as that and you can't breathe because all that carbon dioxide has your stomach pumped up and you can only breathe in just a little bit at a time so you breathe faster and you're getting less oxygen they actually had to put me on oxygen for a little while too um but the surgeon goes in he pumps me full of this carbon dioxide and immediately as he makes the incisions he goes to put his tool in there and he can't he can't get to my gallbladder because my intestine was blocking it. So he had to make, like, a he made his own decision. I mean, I'm sure anybody would have told him, go ahead and do what you got to do, right? You're already in there. It's a little late to stop now. Um, he had to put a patch, like, over my abdominal wall or, or something. He had to take my intestine and shove it back in me. And then he had to put some kind of a patch, it's permanent, um, over this hole in my abdominal wall to keep the intestine from sh pushing back out again. So now I have this weird, I can feel it. Um, it's not pleasant. It almost makes you want to throw up sometime. I, I, I'm sure eventually I'm going to get used to it. I'll adapt to it. But for now, I can feel like my innards rubbing up against this piece in my stomach. Thinking about it, just don't. Okay, it makes me feel very nauseous. So he had to fix that first, and then he had to go and do the gallbladder. The guy had it done in like 45 minutes, like that. 
amazing. Needless to say, now that I've had the surgery, am I still scared of being put under and facing like death? Uh, a little bit, but now that I've done it and I came back and I realized that it wasn't as bad as I psyched myself out for nothing. So I guess part of the point of this video is not just to tell you, hey, we could be short on videos because it's gonna take me a while to recover. I can't lift anything over 20 pounds for two weeks. Um, I've only been out of, as of the making of this video, I've been out of the hospital for four days. This is my first day out of the house. I've been locked up in a bed or in a hospital room for the last seven days. Today, I stopped all my pain medication. I stopped them like a week and a half early. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not into pain pills. I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess with none of that stuff. I can handle it. All right, the worst is over as far as I can tell. So I'm, I took myself off the pain medication. I got to follow up in about a week with the surgeon so he can just make sure everything's going good. And I had to get out of the house. I can't even wear pants, guys. Like, I'm, you know me, I'm always wearing jeans. I'm wearing sweatpants. I got these cuts. I can't wear, I can't wear jeans for a while until all this stuff heals up. Um, so basically the point of the video was to say, we could be short on videos for a little while. If we are, this is why. Uh, I didn't realize I was sick. I didn't realize something was about to happen. Instead of taking a vacation, I had surgery. Uh, technically, I mean, not technically, I had two surgeries. So the gallbladder surgery, to me, that's the easy one. That's not even bothering me. It's the umbilical hernia surgery. That's the one that is preventing me from being able to do anything. Uh, that's what's keeping me from being able to lift anything. It makes it hard to stand and sit because obviously you've got to use your abdominal muscles for sitting up, for leaning back, for standing, for sitting, going to the bathroom. Um, that surgery that was not even supposed to happen, that has caused me most of my misery. It's been the source of most of my actual pain um, and it is currently the reason why I can't hardly do anything. So I came out to AR headquarters today. I said, I got to get out of the house. I drove myself. That hurts. Driving hurts. Sitting. It just, everything basically hurts. Um, I came out and I started messing around with the Monte Carlo SS. And, well, it didn't go well. I, I really should have left well enough alone. I shouldn't have come out and 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 mess with this car because ultimately I ended up having to lift things I shouldn't lift like that JNC 1224 um anyway we'll talk about that in another video but the car uh it gave me some problems today and I'm gonna have to come back here's part of the problem uh hopefully you can see that torn up belt uh yeah anyway I'm gonna come back and I'm going to get back to work. I thought I was going to be able to do it today, um, but it's way too soon, guys. Way too soon to be coming back and trying to get back into work. I had plans on buying some more cars and bringing some more content to the channel, but right now I think I got to put everything on hold. Um, this was also an eye-opener for me. Uh, I generally don't get sick. I've been healthy my entire life, and I know that my diet hasn't been... Uh, my diet hasn't been conducive to a, a healthy lifestyle, um, uh, to being a healthy person. Uh, my entire life, I've eaten cheeseburgers and pizza and burritos and drank soda. Like, and I'm talking my entire life. It's been that way forever. And I've maintained a good between 220 and 230 weight since I've gotten into my 40s and I'm now 44. So I felt like there wasn't too much to worry about. Now, the good news is even with that lifestyle and all that horrible eating, um, all of my numbers for my blood work, everything came back fine. I had a few issues because I had a major infection um, and my gallbladder was messed up. But aside from that, like I'm actually pretty healthy. And with that said, after spending a week in the hospital, and sitting in the house, I haven't gone out to eat. I haven't drank soda, no soda at all in the last seven days. Um, I've been drinking about 95% water and occasionally I'll drink a Gatorade, but I, I haven't even really been messing with Gatorades. It's mostly been lots of water. Um, as far as food, uh, surprisingly, I, I don't even miss going to fast food. I do kind of miss pizza. I love pizza. Um, but my fiance has been making me healthy food. The hospital obviously was making me healthy food. Um, 
So I've actually been he eating pretty healthy uh, over this last week as well. And I have lost almost 20 pounds. That's almost scary to think about, but I've lost almost 20 pounds in a single week. My appetite, I, I, I still have an appetite. I'm hungry. I, in fact, I'm hungry right now. But when it comes to actually eating, whereas before I could eat quite a bit, you know, suck it all down. Uh, I don't have that anymore. Um, that's gone. I, I, I can eat what I would consider healthy portions and then I'm full. So in a way, I see this whole thing as a good thing, you know, for a lot of reasons. Number one, I had to face my biggest fear, which is being put under and going into, going into surgery. Um, I'd say I'm very blessed to be 44 years old with the kind of lifestyle I've lived and I'm still healthy. My only surgery in 44 years was for a hernia that I've had since I was born and a gallbladder that just finally gave up the ghost, man. And I, I met a lot of nurses in the hospital in their 20s and stuff, no gallbladder. They're like, yeah, I got mine out when I was 21, 22, and I'm like, really? So I don't feel so bad. Mine lasted till I was 44. Um, so at the same time, I was forced to face my fears. It also, kind of made me realize, hey, you are 44, Randy. You're not 13, you're not 18, you're not in your 20s anymore. You know, we should probably move on past this bad lifestyle, you know, when it comes to nutrition. Um, that's not to say I'm not gonna go out and have good food, obviously, but to be completely honest with you guys, I, I was going out every day. Every single day I would go out and get fast food or pizza or whatever and, gobble it down. Now, most days I only eat once a day, so that probably helps my situation. I'm not out eating five times a day. It's usually once a day in the evenings. I get up, I do all my work, and then I go find something to eat, then I call it a night. Um, so that's probably helped um, eating once a day. But I think, I think this whole experience gave me an opportunity to, you know, kind of shrink my stomach down a little bit so I'm not as hungry and make me realize that I probably need, for the most part, to be eating things that are a little bit better for me than, uh, than pizza and cheeseburgers and all of that stuff. Uh, we'll limit it, you know? In moderation, things are good. Um, so anyway, that was my experience. I kinda wanted, to, I didn't wanna just make a video telling you videos are gonna be running behind. They might, they might not. It all depends on how I'm feeling. Um, Copart walk-arounds, that's gonna be difficult. Um, I'm having a hard time just walking throughout the day a couple blocks. Uh, when I go to Copart and IA, I'm walking like three to five miles um, carrying that bag with that booster pack. So that could, that could, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm going to try to keep content coming out and I want to definitely update you guys on that. But it was also for anybody out there, it doesn't matter if you're 65 or if you're 19, if you're 13, whatever, um, you know, maybe you've got the same type of fear. Uh, of surgeries, the fear of dying or whatever, and maybe somebody out there, whether it's now or a year or five down the road, maybe somebody will see this video and be like, hey, you know, this dude was literally terrified of dying at 44 years old. He was afraid to go get his side cut open and everything, and he did it, and I came out okay, and I'm here to tell you, you know, all experiences are different. They vary, of course, but um, I'm just, it, it went smooth. Even with a complication, it went smooth, and uh, I couldn't be happier. And obviously now if I've got to go in for another surgery, I know what to expect. I've been through it. I've done it. Um, I still don't understand how they put me to sleep that quick. Uh, you see in the movies, it's like, count down from 10, and by the time they get to 5, they're asleep. There was none of that. They just told me to breathe deep. I maybe breathed in four deep breaths. And just as I'm sitting here talking to you right now, it didn't even fade to black. It wasn't even like, you know, where your eyes start closing. It was like that. I, I, I was out. Um, so overall, great experience at the hospital. Sucks that it happened. Sucks we didn't go on our vacation. But I'm glad that I've got something very serious that could have killed me if I didn't take it more seriously. Uh, I got it taken care of. I'm on the mend, getting better with time and I'm just right now we'll take it a day at a time. I've had a lot of you on Instagram and stuff leave positive comments saying, you know, get well soon. We appreciate you. Hey, listen, I appreciate all of you. You have no idea how much it means to see all those positive comments coming in on my post when I was going through one of the most just scary times 
in my life. So thank you so much for all of your support and for being there for me while I go through this. We'll get back to regular videos. Maybe you won't even notice that anything has happened. Cross your fingers. If we're lucky, I can get right back into videos and we'll make it look like this never even happened. But just in case, I've really been out working too much today. I could end up in bed for another two days because of this. So just wanted to let you guys know. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to drop your comments down below. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.